1976, a tough professional educator named John Sullivan became the principal of a high school in East Chester, New York, that was a virtual blueprint for all the ills afflicting American education. But while education in America was failing, Sullivan was turning his school into a remarkable success. Yet, on October 11th, 1984, John Sullivan was suspended as principal by a board of education that was determined to get rid of him. And that made the people of East Chester mad as hell. You don't assassinate the character of people working in the district. This is a small town, and you just don't operate that way. You don't play fast and loose with people's lives. And I think this shows the bad faith of this Board of Education. This is exactly what they've done. John Sullivan is now suspended with pay until a court hearing determines his fate. He will have to defend himself against a series of charges made by the board. Just how fair, how truthful are these charges? I think we've violated John's civil rights. I think we've denied him his rights as a human being. We have slandered him. We have created questions about his integrity. We've probably ruined his career. They're really punishing him for something that he's never done. And they've, they're actually making a hero out of him because now the town is in full support of him and it's against the seven board members that voted against him. You see, aren't a lot of the prison board educators and pro-union, and I think they're trying to put their own group into the school system to run it as a union-run school. There is a witch hunt against John Sullivan, and there apparently, although I can't explain to you why, there are members of our Board of Education who just want to get John Sullivan out of the way. In fact, John Sullivan was even offered two years' salary, $106,000 to resign and seek employment somewhere else. He refused. Mr. Sullivan, you could have walked away from all of this. You could have gone elsewhere. What do I tell my kids? Uh, you, you stand up for what you believe in until somebody meets your price tag. Uh, you have uh, a moral code uh, that can be bought. And how can you be a leader, which is what I am? How can you be a model to kids? Uh, how can I turn to my student body, either directly or indirectly, and say, kids, you've got yourself another principal now that the new board will like, and they gave me a nice big check just to desert you. I don't think I'd be a very happy person. I'd rather go through this. The scene of the conflict is East Chester, New York, a mostly white, mostly middle class town of 30,000, less than an hour from Manhattan. East Chester High School, population 650, has had its recent share of difficulties. Falling enrollment and declining SAT scores. Although these reflect nationwide trends, the Board of Education pins the blame for them squarely on John Sullivan. But whatever problems East Chester High faces today, they're slight compared to those the school had prior to Sullivan's arrival. Some East Chester parents remember. When John Sullivan came on the scene, he inherited a school that was a disaster an absolute disaster where the uh, discipline was non-existent among students and among staff. Urinals destroyed by uh, firecrackers, smoke bombs. We had, it was not unusual to have three to four fire alarms, false alarms pulled every day. Sullivan moved in, made changes, and quickly ended the trashing of East Chester High. Then, barely two months into office, he accomplished something that East Chester residents still talk about with amazement. He somehow persuaded the student body to give up its coveted winter vacation and paint the entire high school. Basically, the ground rule was that ultimately they were making the decision that this is not some type of a game we're playing here. You're, you're into something serious now. You're going to paint a school. You're going to pick the color. You're going to identify the kids to do whatever sections they're going to do. And you're going to assume the responsibility for your actions. If you want to uh, make this place look like a, a circus and embarrass all of us to the community, well, you've got the brush, you have the paint. But if you want to demonstrate that you can handle responsibility, here's your shot. Sullivan's list of accomplishments went far deeper than a coat of paint. He reduced daily absenteeism from 25% to almost zero. He increased the number of students going on to college by 15% over the previous administration. And John Sullivan raised the number of credits necessary to graduate so that they were higher than any other public school in the state. If I had a high school principal opening in my, my school, I would hire him immediately. Frank Kaplan was John Sullivan's boss at his previous high school in upstate New York. 
He's been a professional educator for 35 years. If you don't have a strong educational leader, you don't have a strong educational system. And John Sullivan personifies strong educational leader. He gets good results. He is the best high school principal I have ever seen. But the Eastchester Board of Education thinks otherwise. They have issued 33 separate charges against John Sullivan, which accuse him of conduct unbecoming a teacher, of neglect of duty, and of abusing his position of public trust for personal gain. We wanted to talk to the board about these charges, but none of the seven members who voted to suspend him would agree to be interviewed. Nor were we allowed to film this public meeting in which some of the charges against Sullivan first were aired. We were allowed to record sound and to take still photos, which reflect, as closely as possible, how people looked at the time they spoke. The photo you now see and voice you hear is that of board president Donna Esposito. Last Thursday, Superintendent Murphy discovered the existences of various irregularities in bank accounts. The records showing the irregularities were located in the high school and the irregular transactions appear to have been created by Principal John Sullivan. So that each board member may follow, I am now giving each of you a copy of the irregular accounts. 8384, page 1, line 9, $105 for food at a restaurant. 8384, page 1, line 11, $118 for food at a restaurant. 1984-85, a total of $200 for refreshments. None of our school officials are authorized for these kinds of accounts for entertainment. This was not entertainment. These were work sessions, either with the freshman class, with the school beautification committee, with students who had a particular problem or project that they were working on. And on a Sunday evening, I would pick up pizza from a local restaurant, bring it to the school. The kids would meet me. We'd unload the car. We'd go into a classroom. We'd meet for two or three hours, and I would take them home. And I think that uh, it would not be very difficult to bring an army of youngsters to attest to that and an army of parents. John would go and buy the pizza and bring it back, and it was a workshop. It was a working session, bringing these students together, brainstorming for the good of the school. I wonder if the audience would be so inclined to be so benevolent if this Board of Education every Monday night went out and had dinner on the taxpayers. I can't even get a lousy cup of coffee in that central administration building without paying for it. But it wasn't the taxpayers who were paying for the pizza, it was the students who decided how they would spend the money they themselves had raised. The pizza money came from the money that we had earned through the Jamborees. Did you know that? Yeah. Yeah. No um, secret about that? No secret whatsoever. So the point is, is that John Sullivan was not ripping off the school and spending money no. for pizza. No, he, we always knew the, the current money situation. I mean, it was never always. a secret. What happened when he was suspended? Something happened that day in school, didn't it? There was a walkout. The teachers were begging us to go back in. About 400 to 500 kids walked out of the first period class. How many? I think about 400. Am I right? Yeah. Several of my yeah. officers went back outside, got these kids in, and they were screaming for Dr. Murphy to explain to them. And uh, Dr. Murphy got up on stage, and we were threatened with suspension if we didn't go back to class. And somebody asked him, well, what are you going to do to suspend the whole school? And he just shrugged his shoulders. And at, you know, after that, everybody just lost respect, and the whole school just walked outside again. I'm angry because he was an excellent principal, and he got things really going, and he cared about what the students had to say. And um, I think that a man like that, should stay in his position because he would have done a lot of good for our school. John Sullivan misses his students just as much as they miss him. And the toll of separation has been severe. Depression was uh, a problem for me, especially during the uh, month of December, because that's always such an active time. And high school kids are such great fun during that period of time. Uh, and I you know, it's a whole void. Uh, you're spending 60 hours a week or more with, uh, with a group of people, and then all of a sudden you can't go on the school property without uh, being considered a criminal. That was difficult to deal with. John Sullivan's absence as principal is equally difficult for many Eastchester parents. We spoke to some whose children were touched by his caring. I had a very shy daughter, and she had a problem in one of her classes. And my daughter just, I always had a problem. She would never speak to, up to her teachers. Well, she, he just had a way with these kids, and 
she had this problem and she went to him. She said, it wasn't hard at all, Mom. I just sat and spoke with him and he helped me work it out and the problem was resolved. And she has the uh, utmost feeling for him. The sincerity and warmth and caring of John comes through so strongly that he is able to con these kids into outperforming what is generally expected of them. He does not know how to tell a child, you can't do that. My son is a quiet kid, and one of the things that John did for him was to make him a member of the um, student council. And when I asked him recently why he related to him so well, he responded that besides being a principal, he was more than a principal, he was a friend to him and a friend to the kids. It's as though you're talking to a stone wall when you speak to that board. We are the taxpayers, they are nine members of the board, and they are supposed to represent the community, but they don't. When you go to a board meeting, you're told you can only speak for two minutes, and God forbid you say something the president does not like, forget your two minutes, she tells you to sit down and shut up. Mrs. Lissio, will you sit down, please? There is a motion on this board. I call the question. All those in favor? Discussion. The taxpayers of Eastchester. You are elected by the taxpayers of Eastchester. And you will not listen to us. In addition to the pizza charges, John Sullivan was also accused of improperly using the services of school employees that on or about October, November, or December 1982, you engaged in misconduct in that you used a school employee, William Renzetti, to fix your Citizens Band radio unit in the school shop. Mr. Renzetti has fixed the Citizens Band radio unit, actually the antenna, on several occasions. If the board had taken the time to ask me, they would have uh, discovered that the CB radio is one of three owned by the school, which we use in the school on a regular basis for security purposes. You said if the board had taken the time to ask you. Uh, They've never questioned me about these things. Did you wish to appear in front of the board? I made uh, a request to their attorney as soon as I discovered that there was difficulty. Uh, their attorney advised me that the board was not interested in meeting with me. And there were more charges. The board also claims that Sullivan used school employees to perform services for him at his home without proper compensation. One such employee is physics teacher and dean of students, Walter Rohr. The board says that Rohr installed a garbage disposal unit in Sullivan's kitchen without being paid. What's the story, Mr. Rohr? That's absolutely true. But, you know, I'm a personal friend of his. It's like you're saying, I, I could have said to you, uh, Harry, listen, I want to move my television. Would you mind come over and give me a hand? He asked me to help him out. Two people had to do it. But even if he offered, I wouldn't accept the money because we are friends. Help me to understand something, Mr. Rohr. What you have just told us, you also told Mr. Kuntz, who's the attorney for the Board of Education and was conducting the investigation against John Sullivan. I told him that John and I were personal friends, and that that's why I, I, uh, I performed those duties. That's why John didn't offer, and I wouldn't have accepted any, any money for those. And I was very angry because I told him the truth, and uh, it was if I wasn't there. It was a waste of my time to go and talk with him because he made the charges public anyway. He made them charges, and they shouldn't have been. I know John's innocent, and I think the courts are going to find him innocent. And I think that um, we're going to have to start building all over again, because the damage that's been done to this town is terrible, absolutely terrible. Dorothy Petroselli is the only member of the Board of Education with a child in the high school. She's one of two board members to speak out for John Sullivan. You've now had a chance to look at the charges against John Sullivan. What do you make of them? They're just um, silly, petty, nonsensical items. Uh, some of them I'm concerned about only in that I believe the Board of Education was negligent in voting charges without seeing evidence. I haven't seen evidence. I always believed that a man was innocent until proven guilty. Well, we're going around proving John guilty, whether he's guilty or not. The other board member supporting John Sullivan is Chuck Miller. You really did disagree with the board's actions in the Sullivan matter, didn't you? I think uh, every, every rule has been violated in terms of John Sullivan. I think common decency has gone out the window. And the scope of the investigation was far beyond the original allegations that had come to the board. Uh, they were going to matters that concerned every possible innuendo, uh, rumor that uh, Mr. Sullivan was ever involved in or had ever been associated with. Were you aware? For example, that the investigation, among other things, would explore his sexual conduct? No. We found out after the fact. 
I remember the board president, Mrs. Esposito, saying how she appreciated the fact that uh, the investigation was going into uh, the sexual affairs of uh, Mr. Sullivan, that she had a 14-year-old, or she has a 14-year-old daughter, who would be coming into the high school, I believe, next year or the year after. And she was very concerned about this, and she was glad we were looking into it. What does that mean? I mean is I, she, what is she suggesting? I can only assume what I'm sure anybody else would assume, that perhaps uh, she thought that uh, Mr. Sullivan was a danger to the uh, children of the school. Of course, that's nonsense, but that's the statement she made at that particular time. You're certain that she said that? I'm absolutely certain she said that. Not that he was I'm a danger to the school. No, no, I'm paraphrasing the, the, the words, but... She said she appreciated the fact that the investigation was going to his sexual conduct. Now, I'm certain of that. The investigation of Sullivan's sexual conduct turned up nothing. Still, it was an understandable source of anger to the Sullivan family. Son John and daughter Jennifer, they don't attend Eastchester High, are saddened by what's happened to their father. Their mother, Elaine, expresses quiet outrage. When I've heard about some of the investigation and some of the charges, it's made me very angry that here in, in this country that this type of thing can go on, that, that people can go to this extreme. Here's a man who has given so much and um, is being treated so unjustly. I never thought that it would happen to him because, you know, he's been a good principal for a number of years, and I don't understand why they want to take his name, our name, and the whole town of Eastchester down just because they want to get him out of there. I never expected it to happen to my father. But it happened. You almost begin to question your own sanity. Uh, you know that there's nothing there uh, that you can uh, remember. Uh, you know that there's nothing there that is even remotely uh, uh, close to what people are accusing you of. And then you, you stop and you say, wow, you know, maybe, did something happen that I missed? Did, was there something very small that I've dismissed that really is very big and I failed to see the importance of it? So yeah, you begin to doubt yourself. The board authorized the attorney to proceed with the investigation, to investigate anything he wanted. Anything? Anything he wanted. Pursue the investigation and not tell the board what he was investigating. Don't tell us. Don't tell us. We, uh, what they basically were saying, uh, to paraphrase, is uh, uh, we have complete trust and faith in what you're doing. Don't tell us what you're going into. And that ignorance is bliss attitude extended to the public board meetings themselves, where potential charges against John Sullivan came as a surprise to all but Donna Esposito, as Chuck Miller pointed out. Did you understand that this information was going to be presented this evening in this forum at this time? No, I did not. So this is as much a surprise to you, the superintendent of schools, the person nominally in charge of the district, as it is for anybody else. Is that correct? I think for the record it should be stated that Dr. Murphy is nodding his head in the affirmative. Let me tell you, Mr. Miller, that I have yet to vote on one single item on this board as president without saying and turning to the superintendent for his recommendation. That's first. But let me tell you something, Chuck. I don't work for Dr. Murphy. He works for me. And he works for this Board of Education. Why is the Eastchester Board of Education trying so hard to get rid of John Sullivan? The board says the charges against him are the only reasons. But many we spoke to disagree. And at this rally for John Sullivan, attended by 600 citizens of Eastchester, an apparent motive surfaced. What have they got to gain by this? What is their underlying ulterior motive? Certainly it's not the charges. Do you think it could be union inspired by the teachers union? Uh, I don't really want to comment on that, but I do think that's a possibility. I think, I think that's a real possibility. The fact is, the recently elected Board of Ed has a majority of its members with strong union ties, including its president, Donna Esposito, who used to be a school teacher and was, for a short period of time, a chapter chairman of the United Federation of Teachers. And it's no secret that John Sullivan's hands-on style of management put him at odds with the teachers' union from the very beginning. It was just a, a free, come-and-go-as-you-please situation which needed some major corrections. 
John Sullivan moved to do just that. And in the course of doing that, he didn't make everyone his friend. The union didn't like what he did. And you began to develop the reputation of, among some members of the faculty as a guy who was pretty tough. Yeah. I think I probably am uh, when it comes to meeting uh, the needs of kids. Uh, those kids trust us. Uh, those parents trust us. This community trusts us. We have the most important product this community will ever generate right there in that building. And people have a right to, to high performance. And we have a responsibility to deliver. Sometimes that's not delivered gently. And sometimes that antagonizes people, yeah. I think some people feel threatened by him. But I think that goes with management. Uh, when you are in an administrative position, there are people who fear you and there are people who love you. And I think he happens to be an excellent administrator. Shortly after his arrival, Sullivan replaced the five department chairman of the high school with two supervisors of instruction. Sullivan says he did this to run the school more efficiently. Those department chairmen, none of whom would speak to us on the record, claim that the new principal didn't want anyone in those positions who was not loyal to him. As soon as Mr. Sullivan came in and started rocking the boat, I think a threat to one member of the staff became a, a threat to everyone. Alice Schwartz is a supervisor of instruction at East Chester High, and she says there's an undercurrent of fear running through the school. I've spoken to a number of faculty members, Mrs. Schwartz, and with the exception of you and one other man, Walter Rohr, no one will talk to us on camera, on the record. They come and they tell me that they are supporting John, but they don't know how they can express it without possibly jeopardizing themselves. And if I gave you specific, ex I don't know who, you know, different people were pressured in different ways. And, um... Pressured by whom? Other staff members. Really? Really, absolutely. In other words, speak out for John Sullivan and it will be bad for you. In a sense. Just that it would be wiser not to, that it's wiser to wait until the hearing is over and let the courts decide that uh, teachers should not get involved. As I uh, believe students were told, they should not get involved. We should get involved. It's our school. I mean, they just work there. We got to go to school there and we got to learn and we go through eight periods a day. I know they do their job, you know, and they teach us and, you know, they do a good job, but it's our school and we care about it, you know. It, it's just, it is our business, no matter what they say. We should get involved, and I'm glad that a lot of us have. My name is Dina Moeller, and I'm the senior class president. Since the class of 1985 feels very strongly about the board's action against our beloved principal, John Sullivan, it is our wish that the board not be involved in the distribution of diplomas on commencement day, June 21st, 1985. <laughs> These days, the only opportunity John Sullivan has to see his students is when they come to see him. Please, it's the first pizza pizza they've had since October. For Sullivan, the time is a renewal, a reaffirmation of his life in education. I don't think you can go wrong trusting teenagers. When they understand that you trust them, they don't take advantage of that. They're not the sophisticated uh, adult who's out in the business world. They're just uh, working their way through difficult years. And trusting them is very important to them. And they'll never let you down. Nowadays, much of John Sullivan's time is spent alone. He keeps busy by preparing for a $10 million lawsuit he has filed against the seven members of the Board of Education who voted to suspend him, plus the board's attorney. He is also working on his defense for the New York State Court hearing, which will determine his future. It may be more than a year before he learns if he's to get his job back. What's going to happen to John Sullivan? John Sullivan is going to uh, go back to East Chester High School as its principal uh, with his head uh, high and his shoulders square. And we're going to pick it up where we left it off. That's what's going to happen. No question? No. Nope. No matter how long it takes? That's right. A year? 18 months? Mm hmm I'll know when I'm, I'm no longer capable of being a good high school principal. Uh, and that decision will not be made by uh, dollar bills or threats or uh, harassment or smearing my name or whatever. 
Uh, when, I, when I begin to lose the relationship uh, with the student body, when I begin to feel inadequate as, as uh, a leader, then it's time to go someplace else to do something else. But I'm not ready for that yet, and I'll wait it out.